turn to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. This sermon covers verses 1 to 12, but I will read verses 1 to 4. And then we'll follow the rest. Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading verses 1 to 4. And preaching from verses 1 to 12. If you have it, say amen. amen. Genesis chapter 33. Verses 1 to 4. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times All right. until he came near his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. I want to preach about requirements for reconciliation. Requirements for reconciliation. I'm sure it comes to you as no surprise today that there is much conflict in our world. There's conflict between people. There's conflict between groups. There's conflict between countries. People are killing one another. People are losing the things they've worked for all their lives simply because of conflict. Uh, just a few years ago, I believe it was back in the 90s, in the African country of Rwanda, there were two tribes that were in severe conflict where they just killed one another like a hobby. The Tutsis and the Hutus hacked one another with machetes simply because they just didn't like each other. You, you look a few days ago in the nation of Iran where the hardliners and the reformers came together over the results of an election. They began to hurt one another and kill one another. And even here in the great nation of America, we find conflict. Just this past week, people shooting one another, hurting one another, killing each other. You find conflict even in the political realm, liberals going against conservatives, simply because they just cannot get along. One of the reasons, my brothers and sisters, why these conflicts persist is because some folk, some group of people, yeah. have simply neglected or refused to use that powerful phrase within our English vocabulary that has only three words, and that phrase is, I am sorry. Come on, come on. It, it, it seems as though these individuals and others who may have 
wronged one another, which caused the conflict, just can't seem to bring themselves to the point of realizing and recognizing that they need to come together and talk about their conflicts and somebody needs to be man or woman enough to simply say, I'm sorry. I haven't, I haven't been around too long, Rabbit Hill, but I have been around long enough to know that those words have gotten me out of some tight spots. Uh, just, just to go ahead and admit that you were wrong and then to apologize or say I'm sorry and pursue some form of reconciliation can bring healing not only to the people, not only to a group, but to a whole nation. Simply by saying, I am sorry. My brothers and sisters, when we look throughout this community, throughout this state, even throughout this nation and this world, that we will have to agree reconciliation is needed. And the reason why it is needed is because killing one another, hurting one another, walking away from one another, deserting one another, doesn't get you anywhere. All it does is make you sick and make other folks sick. And before you know it, a whole nation is sick. Simply because folk just don't want to reconcile. When you go throughout the Bible, you will see that this concept of reconciliation runs all the way from Genesis to Revelation. That God talks about how his people don't need to hurt one another, but need to come together and talk together and work together to settle the differences and let life move along in the way that he has designed. But as a result of conflict, what has happened is so much destruction and devastation has entered our lives and really we're being destroyed by ourselves. When we look at this text today, we see two brothers, family, king folk, coming together to reconcile their differences. The story doesn't begin here in, in, in chapter 33. It begins, you remember, when Jacob tricked Esau out of his birthright. And after he did that, there arose conflict between them, and, and Esau got mad at Jacob, and it got so bad that, that their mother uh, uh, had to send Jacob to live with her brother later in heaven. No, 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 no. And you know what? That's why he went and met great children and had children, and the life went on. I'm not going to take too much time going through that story. You already know it. Right. But now, Jacob takes Rachel and Leah and all his property and all his children, and he decides he's going home. Well, on his journey, he runs into none other than his brother, the one with whom he has had conflict over many years. And, and if, 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 this, if this were a movie, I, I guess someone would call this the climax, because here, uh, here is one brother who, who was offended, and here is another. 